Here we have a hypothesis test for a mean that's very similar to hypothesis tests you might consider in everyday life. In this problem, you see on a cereal box by Hardy Grain that the weight says 18 ounces. However, you suspect that the average weight of this brand's cereal is smaller than 18 ounces. You're asked to use the following data with an alpha significance level equal to 5% to test your claim that the average weight found in this brand's cereal box is smaller than 18 ounces. We're going to perform a hypothesis test to test an average or mean, and the specific hypothesis test that we will use is called a t-test. We're going to use a t-test as opposed to a z-test for the following reason. First of all, Whenever you're given a list of data, as in this problem, and asked to perform a hypothesis test for a population mean, the hypothesis test of choice will be a t-test regardless of whether the list is 30 or less or more than 30. Remember that the number 30 is the operative number when deciding between a t-test or a z-test. A z-test uses the normal distribution. A t-test uses the student t distribution. And we will adopt the convention that whenever we have a list of data, even if that list of data were more than 30 in size, then we'll use a t-test. Also, if we were given the information for this hypothesis test using not a list of data, but instead summary statistics, we would look to the sample size in the summary statistics, and if the sample size were 30 or less, then we would elect to use a t-test again. So a z-test is only used when we're given a hypothesis test using summary statistics and the sample size is given as more than 30. We start our hypothesis test by following the four steps in setting up any hypothesis test. That is, we first write the word claim, and since our claim involves an average, the average weight of cereal in this brand cereal box, we'll use the Greek letter mu. Our specific claim is that we believe that the average weight of cereal in this brand's cereal box is smaller than the 18 ounces on the label of the cereal box. So that our claim is that mu is less than 18. Next, we write the word opposite. And to write the opposite of this claim, we use the same two symbols found in the claim. We'll use the symbol mu and 18. To determine the inequality symbol between mu and 18, we look to the claim. Since the inequality symbol points to the left in the claim, the inequality symbol will point to the right in the opposite of the claim. And since the claim has no equal sign, the opposite will contain an equal sign. Step three is to determine which of these statements is the null hypothesis. So we look for the statement that contains the equality. The greater than or equal to symbol tells us that the opposite of the claim in this case is the null hypothesis, which means that our claim that the average is less than 18 is the alternative hypothesis. We will use the TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator to do this problem. First, we'll go to the list editor by clicking on the stat key and then enter. And in list one, I've put the values found in the list given for this problem. In putting in values into a list on the TI-83 or 84 calculator, it's very important to do it carefully and then to double check your work because as the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. With the numbers in the data list correctly put into list one, we'll now go back to the home screen by clicking second quit. And now we'll go to the stat button and select the tests menu. And as previously stated, the test that we'll be using for this hypothesis test is the t-test. The sample size in this problem is 30 or less. 
So that means that we would use a t-test. Even if the sample size were greater than 30, the fact that the data is given in a list means that the test of choice in this case will be the t-test. So therefore, select number 2. We see that for a t-test, the input can be either in the form of a data list or summary statistics. And since our data in this problem is contained in a list, we'll click the Enter key to select data. The next line, mu subscript 0, pertains to the number found in the null hypothesis. That number in our problem is the number 18, so we will simply input 18. The next entry is the list that contains our data, and we put the data in the list 1, so we'll click the second key and 1 to give list 1. The frequency is 1, and if this were not filled in, we would need to be very careful in putting in the number 1, because if you look carefully, there's an A inside the cursor, which means the calculator is presently in alpha mode, which means that if we were to hit the number 1, we would get not the number 1, but instead the letter Y, because Y is the letter over the number 1 in the green color. So we'll clear that, and before hitting the number 1, click on the green alpha key to turn off alpha mode, and then the number 1. The symbol that we select of the three symbols shown is the symbol contained in the alternative hypothesis. And since the alternative hypothesis contains the less than symbol, We'll go down to the entries for the symbol, move over to the less than symbol, and select Enter. Finally, we go to the Calculate option and ask the calculator to calculate the output for this t-test. The output screen shows that we indeed are doing a t-test. The next line is the line found in the alternative hypothesis. T equal to negative 2.304, etc., is the T test statistic. This is the test statistic that is computed by the calculator from the sample data found in list 1. This is a T score, similar to a Z score, but the test statistic T score found in the student T distribution. This T score is taken to two decimal places, so if we were asked what is the T test statistic, the answer would be negative 2.30. Next, and most importantly, we have the P value, which is the probability value, and that probability value is 0.017. We take p-value to three decimal places, and we will adopt the convention that the test statistic, whether it be a t or z test statistic, should be taken to two decimal places, and p-value taken to three decimal places. The other information on this output screen is that the sample average for our sample is approximately 17.7, that the standard deviation for our sample is approximately 0.51, and that the number of values contained in our data list, the sample size, n, is equal to 17. The p-value of 0.017 is compared to an alpha of 0.05. We will use the p-value method to determine the answer to this problem. The p-value method says that when the p-value is less than the alpha level of significance, that we reject the null hypothesis. That is the case in our problem. The p-value is 0.017, and that is less than the level of significance alpha equal to 0.05. Therefore, we would reject the null hypothesis, and therefore fail to reject or support the alternative. Since the claim in this problem is the alternative hypothesis, our decision would be to support our suspicion that the average weight in the hearty grain cereal box is less than the 18 ounces on the label of the box.